for those that I've not had the privilege of meeting, and it's such a treat to see so many familiar faces again. So I'm Danielle of Beyond the Sky, and it's our privilege to be able to share the knowledge from this community of practice. Um, as mentioned, we also saw so many of you in uh, DevLearn in person. So our goal is just to really help elevate the learning and development industry. So while we specialize in creating learning solutions custom to each organization, like onboarding curriculum, systems training, and soft skills, we're also really truly committed to ensuring and helping the learning and development industry be best poised for future success. Hence, that's our focus on this AI plus learning and development community practice. Joining me today are my team members, Luke, Yelena, Frank, Jenny, and Marge. And then behind the scenes, oh, we've got uh, Jovi, Mark, and Abed. Um, and I'm particularly excited to announce some of the special guests, which I'll be doing as we go throughout the session today. So all year, we have been meeting in this community of practice, and it's been exciting to hear your feedback, share ideas, but also, we're also taking in your feedback and ideas. And we've you've heard us say, you, you said to us, okay, this is great. I want to see some more ideas of how I can help advance um, learning development. What can I even do in my own company? So today, we'll be sharing with you three examples. Um, and I'll introduce the guests for those shortly. And after those examples, we'll have about 15 minutes or so of participation in a breakout room. And then we'll answer a few of the, today's questions. So, if I may, um, with, I'll share the first example that we have, which is our own example. It uses ChatGPT and Storyline integrated within it. The use case that we have is that uh, we needed to have just-in-time coaching support that's not judgmental, that's consistent, but we also needed to be completely open to the direction that the user um, will take it in. So completely free along that regard. So we ideated on how we could best possibly do that without every, having an actual person there. And this is what we have. So imagine you are a newly promoted, let's imagine this is training, a newly promoted, and you have a sales meeting that you're particularly worried about. You need some coaching support. You ask your ChatGPT coach, who asks you, what's the main objective or outcome you hope to achieve during the session? I write down in this case, I hope to survive the meeting without feeling like an idiot. <laughs> it asks me in turn, what specific behaviors or situations make you feel like an idiot in these meetings. So notice right here what's happening is it's actually asking me a question based on what I put into it. I might write back, the finance director keeps asking really tough questions. In turn asks me, what makes the questions from the finance manager difficult to answer? Um, in turn, I would say, hey, these are questions I hadn't thought of before. Um, it in turn might ask, what specific topics or areas does a finance director tend to focus on in their questions? So as you can see here, it's providing information that's tailored to my own specific needs. It's really harnessed against what I need to do as a learner, and it gives me something that I should be thinking about. You know, it's asking me, you know, what's the impact? I may say, it makes me reflect. I consider the opportunity cost. Who is impacted? The payout. Um, it's all designed in such a way that it's even providing not specific answers, like we did that on purpose, but instead is asking reflective questions. Um, and then in turn, it does allow us to eventually, you can actually get some specific advice. But as you notice, it's unpacking, it's making me think, okay, have I, how have you prepared for addressing the opportunity cost of your plan? Right. Um, good point. This is all where the reflection comes in and how this 100% personalized coaching that's quite wide, quite big in nature, can come to life. Um, so it's just one example of how to use, in this case, ChatGPT to be able to integrate it directly into our learning solution in such a way that provides customized feedback. Um, and customized coaching in this case.
uh, int introduce Mike Vaughn, one of our wonderful special guests that we have here. Um, and in particular, I was just blown away seeing Mike's work and, and thought he'd be a lovely addition to share some of the great things that um, he's doing, his organization. So Mike Vaughn is the chief editor at The Thinking Effect, which is a platform to help learning and development professionals use AI tools to advance their careers. He's also the CEO of The Regis Company, which provides AI-driven tools to business simulations. So I'll let you introduce yourself and then I'll, I'll share your screen. All right. Well, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, it's so cool to be part of this community. Uh, earlier this year, we uh, launched a website. Some of you might have heard of it. It's called the, the Thinking Effect. And it's a site that is uh, dedicated to the L&D professionals who are interested in learning about AI tools, uh, specifically uh, to how to use the AI tools to advance in our careers. And uh, you might know Marcus. Uh, he's one of the other co-editors of The Thinking Effect. And one of the things we quickly realized early on back in February is that the growth was going um, to get way beyond anything that him and I could ever get our heads around. And so we said the best thing we could possibly do is open this up to a community. So we started to share all of our research, all of our point of views and everything through the thinking effect. And now it's tracking about 400 different tools that are there to help us in the L&D community figure out which ones might be a good fit in our organization, share best practices, share how we're using those tools. So I would encourage you to check out that site if you haven't already. So um, the thing I was going to show you a little bit about today was uh, Rex. Are we going to do that now, Danielle? Or Yeah, let's do that right now. All right. That's perfect. So um, what I'm going to actually show you is part of my other duty. Uh, so as Danielle mentioned, I'm uh, the CEO of the Regis Company. And we're a company that has built the, the very first AI platform uh, for building simulations. And so what would I mean by a simulation? So a simulation is something that places a learner into a situation in which they have to make decisions and they get to experience the impact of those decisions. So in other words, it's all about skill practice. It's all about learning through failure. It's all about learning through rapid feedback and, and so on. So it's a very immersive experience. The problem with simulations has always been that they are too expensive, too hard to build, too hard to deploy, too hard to maintain, and so on. And so two things that we wanted to figure out uh, this year is, first is how to get the tools that allow any organization, and I really do mean any, any organization to build simulations and then provide them with the AI tools that writes most of the content for them into the simulation. And so now uh, with that, and this is actually all operational, and so I wanted to walk you through really the game-changing tool that made the difference to make simulations really scalable and affordable, and this is called Rex. And Rex is a tool that allows you, think about Rex as the co-pilot, kind of like the Microsoft co-pilot. Think about Rex as the co-pilot for the instructional designer. This is to help the designer not only design the simulation, but write all the content uh, for the simulation, about 75 to 85% of it. It's and it is high quality content. That was the other objective. It's we wanted to go way beyond just using ChatGPT to generate content. We wanted to create an environment that allowed the co-pilot to really train the AI to really ensure that what it's generating is responsible, it's ethical, it's, um, it's something that the subject matter experts can review, and then it's something that then would use to generate all the simulation content. So that's what the big picture of Rex is. So step one in Rex is uh, you tell Rex what you wanna learn. It's any topic you could possibly imagine, you click new project and then you go to the step two here. And in step two, um, what we wanted to do is every organization has their own content, whether it's e-learning content, whether it's a leadership framework, whether it's their values, something that represents our culture. We wanted you to be able to ingest all that in into a secured private database, a vector database, and then use and tell Rex to use your content and maybe supplement that if need be to generate the simulation content. And so uh, the big, most important thing here is this content is kept completely separate. So it's never used to train any other large language model. It's just kept private. But what's important here is now when you generate the sim, it truly reflects your business, your culture, your uh, strategy, whatever you want it to be. So that's, uh, that's what it's meant on part two. Part three 
<clears throat> is then where Rex goes off and generates everything. And the first part here, you'll see it's called prerequisites. So before it ever generates the simulation pages, we want to make sure that what's coming out of the AI actually is good, high quality content that represents what you're really trying to help the learner understand and really represents your business. So it generates the key themes and ideas. It develops all the supporting details. It talks about the relevance to the learners of what it's generating. It writes all the learning objectives and has you confirm all the learning objectives. It writes the overarching storyline of the simulation, the roles and goals, and a whole lot more actually. And it's your job then as the instructional designer to go through that and make sure that is really on target. And this is usually a good time to bring in the subject matter expert. So now imagine instead of asking the subject matter expert with the blank slate, you provide all of this content and everything for them to really review and sign off. So that's part three. Part four is Rex uh, goes in and does its magic. So this is where you as an instructional designer would say, I'm going to build a three round simulation. And in round one, I want multiple scenarios and video branches and everything else. And then it writes the content for all the simulation activities. It also writes activities for avatars. Uh, so if you're familiar with like Synthesia or Colossian, uh, it writes the uh, scripts for those things. It can actually generate video scripts and actually using something like Pictory to create the video for you on demand. So it's really pretty cool. And then it can actually do things like create some of the e-learning primers, assessments, and all that kind of stuff for you as well. So that's step four. And then step five is where you take everything that it generated and you export it into another tool called SimGate. And SimGate is the tool that takes all the content that you created as an instructional designer using Rex and then assembles a simulation, and then you can actually click play and actually start to experience the simulation. And then using SimGate is where you can go tweak the avatars, select different avatars, adjust the videos, adjust the branching, adjust the scoring, all those other types of things. So pretty excited, as you can probably tell from my voice, because the AI has truly made it possible to take what we consider one of the most powerful ways of learning and making it now affordable for any organization and also just you know equipping instructional designers you know not to really to accelerate a lot of the types of things that really can take a long time in building whether it's e-learning assessments or simulations so that's what we're excited about that's amazing actually let me share what it can look like in the sim. Um, and while I do that, I strongly encourage people to actually go out to the thinkeffect.com to be able to get a sense of all the all awesome creative tools, which we'll speak about later, but also uh, the rangescompany.com to actually check out and see what this, these look like when they all come together. It's pretty amazing, um, pretty amazing to see it, see this all. So I highly recommend that and we'll be sticking those links into the chat. So I will introduce Dominic Kovacs, who is the founder of Colossian, which specializes in AI-powered video creation. So you can actually now create AI actors in minutes. Um, but what really struck me actually is Dominic's vision for how AI avatars could create actually truly better learning. So not just another talking head video, but actually incorporating it in such a way that addresses the needs of learning and development and helps us be future forward. One of the things that we saw in class and above all the other AI avatar tools out there that we're tracking is that they, first off, they're really focused on the L&D community, uh, which is fantastic. Second is they are now having where two avatars can actually uh, have a role play, if you will. So imagine watching an avatar having a conversation with another avatar and then pausing and getting kind of the, uh, the learner to be able to respond to that situation. It takes the avatar learning to a whole nother level. And then uh, some of where, where they have a vision of the type of data and everything that they're tracking, uh, we really feel like it's going to be some pretty game changing uh, AI avatar technology. And with that, let me share what this actually looks like. So the really uncanny thing, <laughs> let me introduce, let me introduce Dominic. How about that? Let me introduce Dominic. Hi, and welcome to Colossian. Colossian is an AI video platform for workplace learning, where anyone can create professional training videos. I'm Dominic, the CEO and founder of Colossian, or to be more precise, I'm his AI avatar using his cloned voice, 
If you'd like to get to know the real me, let's connect on LinkedIn. Just scan the QR code in the right bottom corner or look up my name. Aside from my AI clone, there won't be other Dominics like me. Try out Colossian for free and experience the power of AI video. So if any of you, uh, what's actually particularly cool with this, which you can see is not, um, it's not actually him. Um, but what's particularly cool about that is it sounds exactly like him. So he, that's actually his voice and his mannerism. So pretty darn cool. What I would love to do is to be able to help drive these further conversations. Natalie has some of these ideas shared. Also, Nas has shared some other ideas, others that share ideas. This provides some food for thought. Um, so we bring back a theme that's been on the table for um, like a few months already, and it's related to security and proprietary information. Um, so the main question here is not if it's good to use in proprietary information in chat GPT, but it's more how do we start and how do you start that conversation as a company, right? So where would you go if you wanted to get any sort of uh, uh, in-house built AI tools that will keep your information private and your company's information private? Right. So that's uh, that's the main question, because we all know we cannot just go and put information everywhere. But how do you start that conversation and how do you keep it compact so that your clients and your company feel safe about using AI in a control environment? Thank you. Uh, Yelena. Yes, yeah, so we had uh, a slightly different conversation. Uh, I'd say ours was quite practical as uh, the participants of the group were kindly sharing the examples of their integration of AI tools into their learning and development work. So we talked about mostly about um, image generators, AI powered image generators, and uh, how they are being used um, in developing, when developing courses. So for example, um, Julia was able to share how she was how she, how she was able to create an image of a concept that's otherwise impossible to find on the internet. So it saved her a lot of time and it also resonated much better with the content. And it, uh, as to uh, Sylvie's point, it's not, we, we don't have to deal anymore with, you know, images and, and stock photos, which are repetitive and even boring to some people. We are able to be creative and ideate and create amazing uh, personalized uh, images that everybody can relate to and that can really reinforce our content. Thank you. Um, and Luke? Um, yeah, so we, we had a conversation which was more centered around um, how people can start to kind of place data into a sandbox so, so that the AI is drawing from very specific data in a, in a kind of controlled environment. So I was sharing some of kind of the PDF work, Danielle, that, that that's been being explored and how successful that's been and how how great it's been to see the AI responding um, to process related questions from the voice of beyond the sky, which I think has been, you know, great to see. So, yeah, we had a real positive discussion around, you know, these controlled data sets and, you know, picking, answering questions from very specific content rather than just you know, all out chat GPT sort of thing. Sylvie's question. So um, the point being is how can you use chat, like how can we literally just like us use chat GPT with our own internal information, not being in a large enterprise. So what we did is we integrated the information we wanted to be um, contained within a PDF. So it's all of our own internal systems processes, checklists, like the whole kit and caboodle. We put that in to our, um, th that combined with the large language model and it's all none of it's going back out to the internet because it's hard data um so it's with our own apis so we've created it such a way where it's actually pulling answers from our own internal systems and augmenting that with what's out there on the internet so we have an accessibility checklist so give me the steps in the beyond the sky accessibility checklist it does that um and what's neat is that it also 
does pull from the internet to have just a more fulsome answer. So it can be done. It is out there. And even just for people that aren't within the whole large enterprise, we can even do things on a smaller scale. Namely, the idea of integrating AI avatars to chat GBT so it provides personalized feedback. Um, so there is, we are looking at ways to integrate that, but what happens is the reality is there's, in this answers many questions, there's the reality of where things, let me just stop this, there's the reality of where we have our ideas and sometimes we're often constrained by where the technology is now for the speed requirements that you and I need as a user. So that's where we're facing some of those difficulties in a lot of the generation time that things take to do it's there's many things like that which we're working on that sound easy but the challenge is the back end of actually trying to do it in a way that's quick and timely um we're doing a number of different tests even with our own voices in it but we need it we want it to be consumer grade and i think that's where the opportunity is for all of us collectively to keep trying to keep pushing the envelope, to keep seeing what's out there. And then like we're doing in this community is to be able to share that back. Yeah, so this was posted in uh, by Sarah. Uh, she, I think she's heading uh, out. Um, and I, th I think if I may speak on her behalf, I think it was referring mainly to abilities like opportunities there are with chat gpt uh to personalize learning um for example she also um posed a really good question on how we can integrate it with uh for example speaking avatar ai speaking avatar to provide personalized learning um to actually have a speaking head uh you know just give feedback instead of chat gpt showing text that this feedback which is a brilliant idea right um so i think that's more or less where she's coming from like the personalized the, the personalization aspect and what we can do to really make it personal using our own data using um human like elements as well that's awesome and i think that really sets up the brilliant use case maybe someone use case i'll try but a use case in general to try so it adds that personalization element it adds in the um so honestly it's that future end state that i see which could be something that tries as much as possible to replicate the benefits that we have as a human conversation yet it's in a way that it's consistent, it's objective, it doesn't get riled up um, and it won't take our jobs as humans, but it can really help be alongside us to be that, that future, hopefully that future partner that we have. And because the technology is moving so fast, so if you look back where you were, uh, beginning of the year, where we were to now, where you might have been at the start of our community practices to now, there's been so much that has changed in that time. And this really affords us the opportunity to think, okay, these can seem like far off dreams right now, but they actually are probably just around the corner with some uh, benefits of some of the great service providers, the great vendors who are making some of these things easier for us. Um, so with that, I did want to share some of those resources that can help all of us collectively on our journey. Um, and I also want to be able to help extend this lovely community and to be able to answer further questions that you have and share this rich discussion. Just so many good insights are happening in these groups and all the feedback I get afterwards about the collaboration. I'm just so delighted to be able to share that. I do encourage you to uh, use a second link at the bottom for the community practice on LinkedIn, where we can stay connected. We can stay abreast to see what that next avenue is, what that next direction is. So please go there. And for further insights on these topics, there are we do go into them in depth on you in 2042, the Future of Work podcast. That's the first QR code. And these links will all be populated into the chat as well. Do you want to say, um, so Marcus is available for AI consulting and has done a number of this type of work across North America. Um, and I was also a part of the thinking effect, um, which Mike Vaughn shared. So 
I heard in some of the reading your chat column, chat comments, and then in our breakout room, there's a lot of tools out there. The thinking effect, it's just an organization. It's not, they're just like a, they're not, not a profit organization. They're just there to actually help you. So what Mike has done, he's taken the effort and time to curate all the AI tools for learning and development. So you don't have to go and figure out what's useful. They're all right there. Um, and then you can also find and connect more about him at the regiscompany.com. Um, and then lastly, oh, and there was chat comments as well about how to try out Rex AI. So yes, uh, we'll send the links for that, but you can also see it at um, the regiscompany.com. And then lastly, um, uh, Dominic is offering everybody a free trial of Colossium. So something you may want to try out. All together, this has been such a delightful experience as we've grown throughout the year. Um, we've been able to have amazing conversations, been able to have rich discussions, and I'm so glad we were actually able to have this type of peer conversations that I heard from the feedback in the community it was really craving and the intentional smaller groups um, that we wanted. And we will be sharing the recording out because I know so many of our dear peer industry peers weren't able to join because some of the tech issues that happened today Despite our best laid plans, Plan B, C, D, E, um, we will be able to share this out with everybody and collectively all of us. This means that all of us can continue to grow and learn as we've created amazing community of practice this year. So I want to personally thank each and every one of you for your great participation, collaboration, and here's to many more things to come. Mm -hmm.